people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, welcome to Newspeak South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Hardliners and global terrorists grab top positions in Taliban government. India faces fresh Kashmir concerns after Taliban's victory. And Afghanistan will become sanctuary for Pak-based terror outfits after Taliban takeover, say experts. Let's begin with Afghanistan, where the Taliban announced their cabinet three days after the chief of Pakistan's notorious ISI reached Kabul to decide on government formation. In terms of structure, the second Taliban government in Kabul is in many ways a reflection of the first. Many of the same leaders are still in power and the cabinet is non-inclusive and Pashtun dominated. The imprint of Rawalpindi is clearly visible in the dominance in the new cabinet of the leaders of the Haqqani network terrorist outfit and the Kandahar-based Taliban group. A report. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, as they call themselves, has officially been established. The Taliban recently unveiled a hardline interim government with key roles being shared by high-profile members of the insurgent group including Srajuddin Haqqani, a designated global terrorist. Terrorists who had been incarcerated at the Guantamo Bay facility by the U.S. for many years are among the members of the Taliban cabinet. Unsurprisingly, this new government has Pakistan stamp all over it. The hand of Islamabad is evident in the choice of the new Prime Minister, Mullah Muhammad Hassan Akhund, and the induction of several Haqqanis in the government. Needless to say, the ISI chief Faiz Hamid was in Kabul to ensure that its proxies get plumb posts. At least 20 of the 33 men in the new cabinet are from the Kandahar-based Taliban group and the Haqqani network. Importantly, the Taliban group based in Doha, which had been negotiating with the international community, appears to have been sidelined. <laughs> Mullah Muhammad Hassan Afan, Sarparasti Riyasat al Wazara. Mohtaram Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, Mawini Riyasat al Wazara. Mohtaram Mawlawi Muhammad Yaqub Mujahid, Sarparasti Wazarat al Difa. Mohtaram Al Haj Mullah Surajuddin Haqqani, Sarparasti Wazarati Dakhila. Mohtaram Maulavi Amir Khan Mutaki, Sarparasti Wazarati Kharija. Alhamdulillah, Hiwad Mola Ishgal Saha, Nevi Azadi Terla Sakra. Dijagri Pula Wamil Lamanzalaral. Hiwad Walmo La Sartasari Amnet Saha Barhaman, our Polumizal de Mustakam, Islamism, the Ramastakawalu Lapara. Zamina Masaid as well. Hamdagaraz, Hewad Mukum Mukhtalifu Sahuke Har Arhiz Fayat, Aud Khadama to Arzakawalta Ashad Zaruat Lady. Dada, Supreme Sahildi, no, the Nili Ariki with Afghanistan. The Haqqani network has emerged as the most powerful group in the new government, with four of the clan nominated as cabinet members. The inclusion of Haqqanis in the Taliban government has completely exposed the double game of Pakistan. Selection of Sirajuddin Haqqani as Afghanistan's interior minister is the most telling signal that the cabinet has been picked by Pakistan's ISI. A designated global terrorist, Sirajuddin, is head of a sprawling terrorist mafia, Haqqani network, which has close ties with Pakistan-based Al-Qaeda. He has a 10 million US dollar bounty on his head. Sirajuddin was responsible for orchestrating several deadly attacks in Afghanistan 
including 2008 attack on the Indian Embassy in Kabul that killed 58 people. Moreover, the FBI website says that Sirajuddin was also allegedly involved in planning the attempted assassination of then Afghanistan President Hamid Karzai. The other Haqqani in an important position is Khalil Haqqani, the new Minister for Refugees. He too is a specially designated terrorist who has acted on behalf of Al-Qaeda military. At a time when the world is expressing concern over the track record of people named to top posts, Pakistan is in a celebratory mood. For Islamabad, there is no need for any panic. In my view, there is no need for any panic because there is a situation in Kabul and other parts of the country remain relatively uh, calm. Uh, we would like the Afghan people that uh, to, to, to be in their country, to be part of a nation building process. Many of the Afghan uh, nationals who are experts, who are engineers, who are, uh, would be required to run the government, to run different companies and institutions. And we do also hope that in future there would be a time, a period that refugees in Pakistan and elsewhere could return to Afghanistan with dignity and respect. With this increasing bickering between the Taliban and the Haqqani network, Pakistan is gleefully celebrating its win against America. 20 years after 9-11, Afghanistan is back to square one and the US and the West have learned nothing. Most Western commentary now tries to completely ignore the duplicitous role Pakistan has played in bringing Afghanistan down in flames, unless the West acknowledges that Pakistan is the real problem, Afghanistan will keep burning. While at one side, Taliban is trying to create the semblance of normalcy in the Boto nation by creating a cabinet full of terrorists, protests by hundreds of beleaguered Afghans, especially women, on the streets of Kabul narrates the dreadful situation of the country. Recently, people took to the streets of the Afghan capital, chanted anti-Pakistan slogans and called for freedom, denouncing the Taliban rule. A report. <laughs> Hundreds of Kabul residents came out on the streets and demonstrated outside the Pakistan's embassy demanding Islamabad to stop meddling in Afghanistan's affairs, as they claim that Pakistani drones have conducted airstrikes in Panjshir province to support Taliban. According to protesters, Afghanistan was invaded by Pakistan and that Pakistan should be sanctioned for this. Seeds of residents have also been sprouting through the Afghan women shouting slogans like death to Pakistan. We don't want Pakistani puppet government and Pakistan leave Afghanistan among others. They were marching despite all odds to reclaim their basic rights and freedom after the Taliban announced an all-male interim government, thus eliminating women's representation and participation in the new Taliban regime. Defenseless Afghans are fighting for their rights and life after the world's most powerful militaries fled, leaving the people of Afghanistan alone in mess and misery. Showcasing their actual colors, the Taliban members fired gunshots in the air to disperse the protesters. However, they failed to crush these protests. For weeks, the Taliban have tried to represent their moderate and softer image. But this is their true face. Video footage from the scenes showed people running for cover while heavy gunfire can be heard in the background.
women face the worst though a video surfaced on social media showcasing the women protesting outside the university while taliban beat them up in full public view meanwhile in a candid spirit of boldness and fearlessness an afghan woman was snapped looking face to face at an armed taliban man who pointed his gun to her chest in one of the many compelling images that emerged from the recent protest in the capital as per reports journalists were also prevented from filming at the rally afghanistan's regional news agency reported that its cameraman was arrested for covering anti pakistan protest days later photographs and videos emerged on social media showing two afghan journalists who were reporting on the kabul protest covered in injuries from being thrashed by the taliban when taliban came to power one of the biggest fears was that they would attack the afghanistan's free and vibrant press but they claimed they have changed however with repeated reports of violence and abuses surfacing against journalists in the country all their claims have gone up in smoke nazdik ba da daqiqa mi raqam 7 nafar ba jon ro taxi zur doshtan mi zada in akhir zur ko chubor bolo mi kard mi zada ba jon ba nazdik ki bisyor mor zadan didam ka sol raftim va in mo komilan be hol shud mor az unje bolo kardam burdan ki zindani kun ya bisyor lo ke unje ek chand nafar diyam bor har chi dod bi dod mi kardam ki man nakardam va ma khushunat nakam ma khabar nigar astam ahmiyat nami dadam اتفاقا مسخره میکردم که خبرنگار استی فیلم پخش میکنه تظاهرات گسترش میتین و فقط داد و بیداد میکردم تمام طالبایی که آمده بودن برای زدن من همه هم سن و سال من بودن از من پایین تر حتی 18 ساله 17 ساله بسیار جوان جوان بودن آمده بودن که مرا بزنن Pressure against the Taliban is rising on other fronts as well, notably in Panjshir, a province long locked in battle with the group. The Taliban announced its takeover of the last holdout province earlier this week, but National Resistance Front (NRF), a grouping of anti-Taliban figures including Ahmad Masood, son of the legendary Northern Alliance guerrilla leader, had still not conceded defeat. Meanwhile Pakistan spy agency Inter Services Intelligence ISI that has always backed terror groups against India have been blamed for supporting the Taliban and laying the groundwork for a new government in Afghanistan where a US led alliance fought a war against terror for 20 years The Taliban has taken over Afghanistan and is flexing its muscles for global legitimacy. Here in India, there are voices of concern that the radical group's rule in Afghanistan may affect the situation in Jammu and Kashmir, which is recovering from over three decades long insurgency. International experts and diplomats also believe that the situation in Afghanistan could potentially set off a domino effect in the Indian subcontinent, particularly in the Kashmir region. The dramatic seas of war-torn Afghanistan by Taliban has increased regional worries about radicalization, political Islam and terrorism. The turn of events has triggered fresh apprehensions amongst India's security experts of pan-Islamist groups gaining ground support in Kashmir. There are alarming hints that after Pakistan's ISI has solidified its control over Afghanistan via the Taliban, it may transfer afghans and others to india especially jammu and kashmir many international experts have apprehended that taliban may fuel terror activities in the valley by sending its fighters or by training pakistani mercenaries recently russian ambassador nikolay kudashev also shared concern of terrorism and meeting from afghanistan spreading to kashmir amid the taliban takeover Taliban coming and taking over the reins of government in Afghanistan is a real big problem for the entire Central Asia region because Taliban is going to make Afghanistan as the hub of terrorism which was there in Pakistan now Pakistan will be very happy that all this problem will now be in Afghanistan's lap and they would be now asking Taliban 
to use their men and material to spread terror in India and other places in the world. Set to establish an Islamic government in Afghanistan and to renew its idea of caliphate, the Taliban can reignite violent sentiments in a section of Kashmiri youth. The recent statements of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda too have signaled that there may be fresh instability. In May 2020, the Taliban stated that Kashmir was an integral matter of India. But in September 2021, a Taliban spokesman Sohil Shahin stated that as Muslims, they have the right to raise their voice for Muslims in Kashmir, India and any other country. However, Kashmir is not Afghanistan and the Indian Army is not an Afghan resistance force. Nonetheless, the Pakistan-Taliban agreement should serve as a wake-up call. The Taliban cannot be taken at face value in India. Recent happenings in Afghanistan, wherein the Taliban has formed the government over there and now is in control of Afghanistan, is a wake-up call for India. Because Taliban is basically the child which, is, which was fathered by CIA and ISI. And whatever ISI will say, they will be following. ISI has, and Pakistan have only one issue with India, and that is Kashmir, and that they have clarified time and again. It is for this reason they have fought so many wars. Then after they could not win the wars, they have resorted to raising militants over there. For decades, Pakistan has been dreaming of capturing Kashmir, yet it has never been able to do so. It is again dreaming the same, this time with the help of the Taliban. India needs to be more cautious now as the new Taliban government has a Pakistani imprint all over it and is just an old wine in a new bottle. As Taliban's recent remarks are in contrast with the group's earlier statements on Kashmir, India is expected to increase security vigil in the region. The Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan has raised concerns that several terror groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS will rise up to threaten the world. The Taliban recently appointed members of their most dangerous Al-Qaeda intertwined component, the Haqqani Network, to take the lead in Kabul, making clear that transnational jihad is still a core part of their agenda. Highlighting the complexity of the terrorist threat in South Asia, the European Foundation for South Asian Studies, or EFSAS, hosted a webinar titled Afghanistan and the Region Post-Taliban Takeover. Implementation of new interim government led by Taliban hardliners, including several terror leaders to execute a strict Islamic rule over the country has certainly rung alarm bells for the international security agencies. The Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan has raised concerns that several terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS will rise up to threaten the world. To discuss the threat of terrorism emanating under the Taliban reign, the European Foundation for South Asian Studies, FSAS, hosted a webinar titled Afghanistan and the Region Post-Taliban Takeover. During the discussions, experts have shown concern about the reports regarding foreign arms and ammunition that have fallen into the hands of the Taliban, which are being reportedly diverted to other terror groups in Afghanistan. The, the greatest concern for the international community, particularly the Americans, is what's going to happen about terrorist groups in Afghanistan, in and around Afghanistan. There are major expectations tied into this. I think there are some groups that the Taliban may try to control. There are some groups that they may not be able to control and others they may not wish to control. I think we know roughly how that's going to, that's going to pan out. Uh, and I think, Junaid, I think you said there are many terrorist groups already encouraged, sorry, maybe it's Dorothy, encouraged by Taliban success and looking to emulate this sort of success. If the Taliban can do it, why can't we? As far afield as, as Africa, Syria, Iraq, but more close to home as well. Pakistani Taliban, TTP. Um, I heard the spokesman, um, Mujahid Zavala Mujahid, make a favorable mention to fellow Muslims in Kashmir. Observers said the Taliban's promise for not turning Afghanistan into a safe haven for terrorists 
is far from the truth, given that many Al-Qaeda, Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan and Islamic State fighters find refuge on its territory. The current Taliban regime consists of blacklisted individuals like the members of Haqqani Network, hence putting the international community in a very difficult position in terms of recognizing a government with its officials listed on various terrorist sanction lists. The Taliban cabinet, uh, the caretaker government, uh, shows that uh, how much they care about the concerns of the rest of the world about terrorist, terrorist uh, uh, actors and organizations uh, uh, not being uh, active in Afghanistan. They, uh, they have people, Haqqani network, part and parcel of the Taliban uh, uh, government right now. Four, uh, four major positions have been given to Haqqani uh, people, various people from Haqqani Network, and there are already millions of dollars, five million dollars, for example, uh, uh, reward given on any information on the whereabouts of those actors. So how is Taliban going to negotiate and talk and get engaged with a dialogue with the Western countries, particularly the U.S.? Concerns have been raised that the Taliban-led Afghanistan is going to provide a hospitable operating environment for terrorists, insurgents and militias of various stripes. There is a possibility of Pakistan-based terror groups including Al-Qaeda to get more strategic space in Taliban-ruled territories due to umbilical links between Rawalpindi and the insurgent leadership. Thus. Afghanistan may once again become a magnet or hub for foreign terrorist fighters. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newspeak South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savajay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newspeak South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.